alaikum dear viewers and welcome to our Learn Arabic show. Right, so in our previous session we had been continuing with the, um, the present tense. We completed with the he present tense, she present tense and I present tense. Now today before we start our session for today, I'd like to quote a verse from the Quran. It is um, Surah 68, uh, verse number 1. Surah 68, verse number one is actually um, Surah Al-Qalam, and it goes like this, Noon. Wal-Qalami. Noon, Wal-Qalami, wa ma yasturoon. وَمَا يَسْتُرُونَ So, noon, as you all know, we don't know what uh, it actually means. There are many interpretations. If you want to go and look at um, what the commentators have interpreted, interpreted on um, noon. But what I want to look at is وَالْقَلَمِ وَمَا يَسْتُرُونَ وَالْقَلَمِ means by the pen, okay? Now, wa here is actually used for by. You can use wa for and as a conjunction. You can use wa for, you know, if Allah wants to take an oath. And usually Allah takes an oath of the things that are more um, significant, right? That's why you take an oath, to make something certain or if there is anything to make it more significant. So wa, you can use it for three things. The first thing, wa, okay? The first thing you can use it for is for to take an oath. And you can also use it as a conjunction, such as um, and. And lastly, it's also translated as by, okay? Now, because it's translated in here, in this sentence, it's translated as by the pen. Noon, by the pen, right? Now, because of this word, wow, here, that's why the object is what? The object in this sentence is the qalam. That's why the object has carried here a genitive sign. Why? Because it has been preceded by a wow, which actually means by. Even if you look at Surah Shams, it goes, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, washamsi, it goes washamsi because the shams actually is going to carry a genitive. It's going to carry a kasra. Why is it going to carry a kasra? Because it has been preceded by a wow, right? So noon wal qalami wa ma yasturun by the pen and what the scribes write. This is this actually means scribes. And here it means end. So here, wow means by, by the pen, and what the scribes write. Ma means what. I hope you remember in our interrogation sessions when I was asking you, ma hada, what is this? So that is ma. Ma means what. So by the pen and what the scribes write. Now you look at the Quran, it has given so much significance to the pen. Okay, how much importance the pen is, okay, for seeking knowledge, for writing, for spreading the knowledge. And pen cannot just necessarily mean um, a pen, you know, you can also use anything like ink or any sort of thing you can use to spread knowledge, to read, to write, okay. So the pen has been given a lot of significance in the Quran. There's a whole chapter in the Quran which is named after a pen. It, the chapter name, it's, you look at the Quran, it's Surah number 66. The chapter is Surah Al-Qalam, the pen. Okay, so if you look at um, the Quran, it is also emphasized about reading, about the pen, right? Even about reading, there's a chapter in the Quran, Surah Al-Alaq, it says, Iqra, read, okay? So this was just um, what I wanted to um, show you from the Quran. So when you come across those things in the Quran, it is... Um, easy for you to understand what Allah is trying to tell us, right? Now, I'm aware from the previous session we had not completed all the vocabularies from the poem, um, so I'm going to list them down because we had 25. We did 10 yesterday. Today, 
um, inshallah we'll be completing with the arrest 15. So I'm going to list down the vocabularies. Right, the first we have is Nahar. Then we have Ta'abun. By the time you can look at the words and try to make out what it means, maybe. Um, we have Iqtaraba. Um, then we have Gardun. Then we have Yaghfilu. Followed by Zaymun. Followed by Firashun. Um, we have Habibun. Of course, I'm sure you all know what it means. So if you know the meanings, just try and fill them up. Um, then we have Raha. Then we have Rina'un. Okay, then we have Amanun. We have Arsafirun. Right, they cannot all fit here, so I'm just going to go through these words, then um, give you the meanings, rub it off, and we'll continue with the rest um, three. So we have the word Naharun. Nahar means day, okay, the daytime, Nahar. Then we have Ta'ab. You know, we say Ta'aban, Ana Ta'aban, okay? So Ta'aban, you know, Ta'ab, tired. I am tired, okay? So Ta'abun means tiredness, okay? It means tiredness, but when I say ana ta'aban means I am tired. But ta'abun is the actual noun, meaning tiredness, okay? Iqtaraba means to come close. Ghardun means the singing, okay? Then we have um, yaghfilu. Yaghfilu means unaware, okay? You're not aware, okay, of anything. Then dhaymun. Dhaymun means difficulty. Okay, then we have um, firashun. Firashun means the bed, you know, the bed you sleep on. Then we have habibun. Habib is someone close, the be or your beloved, okay, beloved. Then we have raha means went. It is actually a tense, a past tense, which means went. Of course, it um, went, if you want to say went, you can also say zahaba, or you can say raha. Both mean went. Then we have ina. Ina un is actually a type of plural. We'll be looking at the categories of plural. We have the jamr al salim, the sound plural. Then we have the jamr al mukassir. Okay, now the jamr al mukassir have 15 different categories of plural, and this will fall under one of the categories of the jamr al mukassir, which means problems. Okay, then we have amanun. Amanun means security. You know, amana. You give someone in security, amana. Okay, then we have arsafi. Arsafir is also a type of a plural. It falls under the category of broken plural, Jamul Mukasti, which means sparrows. You know those small birds, the sparrows, right? So I'll go through the meanings of these words one more time just so that you can jot them down. Nahal means day. Ta'ab means tiredness. Iqtaraba, come close. Ghardun, singing. Yaghfilu, unaware. Zaymun, difficulty, Firashun, bed, the one that you sleep on, Habibun, beloved, Raha, went, Inaun, um, the, the problems, Amanun, security, then we have Arsafir, which means sparrows. Now we'll do some sort of interrogation, right? I hope you remember our interrogation class. So I'll ask you, Ahada Naharun, 
is this nahar? You will say, la, hadha firashun. What if I ask you, ahadha naharun? You will say, naam, hadha naharun. Ahadha habibun? Naam, hadha habibun. Ahadha amanun? La, hadha inaun. Okay, I hope you remember our interrogation. I will complete with the very few vocabularies that are left. Um, then we will begin with our topic for today. Right, then we have number 13, we have a samadu. A samadu means omnipotent, right? You know, in Surah Al Ikhlas, if you open the Quran to Surah Al Ikhlas, it says, Qul wallahu wahad, Allahu samad, means God, Allah is omnipotent right okay he's omnipotent he's samad he's independent okay we depend on him but he cannot depend on anyone because he is omnipotent right so we have a samad um, then we have sihrun sihrun uh, sihrun means the dawn time okay and then Lastly, we have Bari ul Bashar. So we have Bari ul um, Bashari. Um, we will be looking in our further sessions why is it Bashari and why not Bashara or Basharu. It means actually creator of mankind. Actually, it's just the mudaf and mudaf ilay, the creator of, okay, this because of this presence of this of um, factor here, that's why we are going to be having uh, a kasra here. But of course, we'll be learning about its mudaf, mudaf ilay, and all that in our um, next session. Right, so a samad, the omnipotent, and why have I put here a tashdeed sign? I have put there a tashdeed sign because of the presence of lam. Because swad comes after the letter lam, and you know that swad is a hurufu shamsiya. It is a sun letter. And because it's a sun letter and it comes after the letter lam, it will carry a tashdeed sign and the lam will remain silent. So I will not say al samadu, I will say as samadu. Okay? So as samad, the omnipotent, sihrun, downtime, bari ul bashar, creator of mankind. Um, now we'll be moving on to our um, topic for today. We're still in the Fi'lul Mudhari, which we'll be um, discussing about. So we are done with this. So we have Fi'lul. Fi'lul what? Fi'lul Mudhari. And you know what fi'lul mudhari means? It means present tense, okay? It's good to know the Arabic as well because I can just come here and start fi'lul mudhari and you will not know what I'm talking about. So you should know that this means present tense, right? So we have done with he present tense, she present tense. Now we'll be looking at I. But before that, I want you to notice a certain trend here. So I have huwa. We are looking at the present tense. So I have huwa. Okay. Then I have hiya. Okay. Then I have ana. Okay. Ana, as you all know, means I. Right. So then I have. I have ana. So huwa, hiya, ana. Huwa, he. She, I. Right. So say I have the root verb kataba. Kataba is my root verb. And of course, it's in the past tense means he wrote. Right? That's my root verb. I want to change it into he writes. From he wrote kataba to he writes. So how am I going to change it? The addition will be ya at the beginning. So it's going to change into yaktubu. Right? So I have yaktubu, 
Then she writes taktubu, right? Then I write aktubu. Now I want you to notice a trend here. There is a certain similarity here, okay? So we have yaktubu, taktubu, aktubu. What is similar here? You notice that um, the kaf here carries adjustive. First letter carries adjustive. Second thing that is similar is what? The last letter will always carry a dhamma. And the third thing that is um, similar is that the addition is always taking place at the beginning. So the addition at the beginning, the first letter has adjustive, okay, and the last letter has a nominative, same thing. Here, the addition is different, but it's taking place at the beginning. The first letter carries adjustive, and the last letter carries a dhamma. So this is the similarity that you will see in the present tense. But however, I had said that there are a few special cases which will not follow this trend. Okay? So for example, if we have qala, he said, as my um, root verb. So I want to say he says. It will change. It will become uh, yaqulu. Right? Yaqulu. But one thing remains the same. The addition takes place at the beginning. However, this qaf here does not carry a justive sign. This qaf here will not carry a justive sign because if I pronounce it with a justive sign, if you try pronouncing it yourself, it will not make, you know, it will not make a lot of sense, right? So I have yaqulu. However, this dhamma remains the same. The addition at the beginning is the same. Then I have here. Here will become taqulu. Addition at the beginning, last letter carrying a dhamma. Then I have aqulu. The addition at the beginning, the last letter carrying a dhamma. Right? Let's look at another example. See, I have hajja. Okay? Hajja means he performed hajj. But what if I want to say he performs hajj? So it will become. Yahidju, it will not be the follow the same trend. Yahidju, okay, then Tahidju, then Ahidju, okay. So this is how it's going to um, follow the trend. Say I have Nadara, Nadara, he saw. Now I want to change it into he sees. It's going to change into yanzuru. Yanzuru addition at the beginning. I have justive sign on the first letter, dhamma on the last letter. Yanzuru. Then I will have tanzuru. Tanzuru. Then I will have anzuru. So this is how it will take its course. Now quickly we will just look at the nahnu, okay? We will just quickly look at nahnu. And how the additions, of course, even in nahnu the additions will um, be taking place at the beginning of the tense or the verb. So we have nahnu meaning we. Right, so we in the present tense, right? So say my root verb, my root verb, say it is jalasa. Now I want to change this into present tense, we. Jalasa means he said. I want to change it into present tense, we. So jalasa, if I change it into present tense, into nahnu, 
what am I going to add? I'm going to add to this a noon, okay? So the addition here will be a noon. But where will I put this noon? This is a present tense we're talking about. So where will I put the noon? At the beginning or at the end? Because we are talking about the present tense, I will place the noon at the beginning. So jalasa becomes najlisu, okay? Not najis, najlisu, okay? So I have jalasa najlisu, meaning he sat, we sit, okay? So you notice the addition here, nahnu. Nahnu starts with a very, you know, easy way to remember nahnu. Nahnu starts with noon, okay? Nahnu starts with noon fatha. Here, present tense starts with noon fatha, right? So this is just a quick way to remember. If I say, nanzuru najlisu naqumu naqulu, you know that we're talking about we, and you know that we're talking about the present tense, right? Not the past tense, okay? So jalasa najlisu. What about hajja? Okay? Hajja, same. I will add noon. It will become nahidju, okay? Nahidju means we perform hajj, the pilgrimage, right? Um, say I have qama, okay? Or say I have, um, say I have the root verb la'iba. La'iba, he played, right? So then, the addition of noon. Noon, if you want to remember quick way, the first letter in Nahnu starts with noon. So I will add a noon there. Then it will change into Nalarabu. Okay? So I have. So I have Nalarabu. Okay? Jalasa Najlisu. Hajja Nahidju. If it's Farwa, Nafirru. Laiba Nalarabu. Okay? So this is how um, these tenses will actually take their um, format. We'll be looking at other further pronouns. You know, then we have finished with he and she and the I and the we, then we'll be going to, you know, anta, anti, antuma, antum, we'll be looking at all those um, pronouns. So this sums up our class for today. Inshallah, we'll meet um, same channel, same time. So don't forget to tune in. Fiamanila and have a nice day.